in the previous lecture we started discussing about the most powerful class of automata turing machines and we have seen that turing machines are very similar to linear bounded automata with only a single difference in the case of uh, linear bounded automata the number of tape cells that an automaton can use is bounded by a linear function of the number of input symbols but in the case of uh, turing machines there is no such bound the tape is infinite to the right direction that is the only difference so as language acceptors whatever linear bounded automata we designed all those are turing machines as well the agenda for today is formally defining the language or the family of languages represented by the class of turing machines so language accepted by turing machines and to formally define a language we need to look at what is called the configuration of a turing machine this is an instance of a turing machine given the state is p the read write head is pointing to this cell and this is the tape content followed by infinitely many blank symbols and a configuration is defined by the current state in this case p the content of the tape and what is the content of the tape it is uh, left hand marker followed by a square b square c square followed by infinitely many blank symbols so this is how you represent it the left hand marker a square b square c square followed by blank symbol in all these cells so infinite repetitions of blank symbol that is the notation and the third component defining a configuration is the position of the read write head if you index the cell using natural numbers then the position here is 5 not that it starts with a zero zero to cell first cell etc fifth cell is where the read write head is positioned so what is the configuration it is uh, uniquely defined by a triple the current state the content of the stack sorry tape at that point of time and the position of the read write head so it's a triple and in the triple not that uh, blank omega represents infinite repetitions of blank symbols formally a configuration of a turing machine m is a triple where the first component is a state then a non blank uh, content followed by infinitely many blank that is the tape content followed by the position of the read write head and we says that this configuration says that the machine m is in the state p with the non blank tape content x in this case x is left hand marker followed by a square b square c square and the read write head is positioned at the tape cell at index m so that is a configuration given an input w the initial configuration of a turing machine is what would be the initial configuration the state must be the start state and left hand marker followed by w the input string followed by infinitely many blank symbols and the read write head must be positioned to the zero to cell that is the initial configuration for any turing machine start state read write head to the zero to symbol which is left hand marker 
and what is the content of the tape left hand marker followed by the input followed by infinitely many blanks so that is the unique configuration for any input w now what is a transition in a turing machine given this configuration we need a transition for the tape simple small c when you are in the state small p and this transition says you change your state to q replace small c with the capital c and move your read write heard to the simple at index 6 so if you apply that transition that is what happened state is changed simple is replaced with capital c a read write heard is moved to the right and uh, this is the corresponding change in the configuration and what is this configuration state is p the content is a square b square c square after left hand marker followed by blank omega and 5 is the position of the cell and after this what will be the configuration according to this state will be q and here in the non blank part the first c small c will be replaced with capital c that is the only change and the position is incremented because it is more right and if it is left the corresponding thing will happen you are moving left that is the only difference and this is the corresponding configuration change the only difference is that here the uh, index is decremented because you are moving left and uh, here lhs there is a configuration in the rhs there is another configuration and star means from the lhs configuration by applying zero or more transitions you can reach into the configuration in the rhs okay you can read it offline but even though writing it is uh, important this is a simple concept from this configuration applying zero or more transitions you can reach into this configuration that is the notation don't worry about uh, the content of the tape etc this just introducing this notation after zero or more steps you can reach into here for example after one step from this configuration you are reaching into this configuration now we can formally define the language accepted by a turing machine a turing machine can be said to accept an input string w you know that for a given w this is the unique configuration the start state after the left hand marker the input string w then on uh, the blank simple in all the remaining cells and you start at the first input simple sorry the first tape simple which is left hand marker suppose eventually after applying zero or more step you get into a configuration where the state is p the unique accept state then the string is accepted okay it doesn't matter what the content of the tape is and what the uh, position of the read write heard is if you are reaching into a configuration where the state is t then the input is accepted it doesn't matter what the tape content is and what the position of the read write heard is from the previous lecture you know that t is a sync state in the sense that once you get into t the machine will remain in the state t forever so that is when a string is said to be accepted so the processing will enter a configuration where state is t it is not going to check whether the input is finished you don't have to finish reading the input the moment you enter t the string is accepted whether or not the string is completely processed is not going to affect the acceptance of the string so that is the concept of acceptance and similarly a string is said to be rejected if it gets into a configuration where the state is r recall that r is again a sync state once the machine gets into r it needs to stay in r forever and r is a reject state so a string is said to be accepted if the 
processing eventually enters the state T and it is said to be accept or rejected if it eventually gets into the reject state. Now a very important question, let M be a Turing machine and W is an input to the Turing machine. Then can we say that either M accepts W or M rejects W? Given an input string, is it always the case that the input string is accepted or rejected? Now you recall that for finite state automata, push down automata, for those two machines, the machine will accept or reject after n number of steps, where n is the number of input symbols. But in the case of tuning machines and uh, linear bounded automata, because the machine is allowed to scan the input by moving left and right in the tape any number of rounds. It is difficult to say when the machine is going to finish its computation. And when coming to Turing machine, because there are infinitely many cells that the machine can use, it is a very difficult answer to say whether the machine is always coming to either T or R. The answer is no. I will give you a very simple example where the machine neither accepts nor rejects. Look at this configuration and suppose you have a transition like this. On PA, you replace small a with the small a itself. Don't change anything, but change your state and move right. This is the corresponding configuration that you are getting in one step. You are just moving right, changing your state. Now suppose here, the only transition available is this. If you are in Q and seeing small b as the tape simple, what you are asked to do? You change your state to P, retain that simple and move left. So you are exactly getting this configuration. And now see, this can go forever. This says you move into this configuration and here it says move back into this configuration and you are in a loop. Okay, in this particular case, it will never get into either T or R. So, in this case, the machine is set to loop on the given input. And now you can formally define the language. The language accepted by Turing machine is the set of all strings accepted by the Turing machine. And not that on a given string, it may or may not accept, that is one case. But how will you say whether it is accepted or rejected? There is no way because if it is the case that either it is accepted or rejected always, then it is easy to say what exactly the language is. But there is a third case in which the machine may loop on the string W. In this kind of a simple machine, you can just look at it and say that it is looping. But in general, the tape is infinite. It may be very difficult to check whether it is getting into a looping situation or not. And in general, getting an algorithm to see whether a machine is getting into a looping condition on an input. This is a problem which is not to be an uncomputable problem. We will see that later, which is what is called the halting problem of the Turing machine, which is proven to be undecidable or uncomputable. Okay? So the points to not from this slide is that given an input string, there are three possible outcomes. One is it comes to the state T and accepts. 
another case it comes to the state R and rejects and one more case is there it is neither coming to P or R it loops on the input so there are three possibilities accepting rejecting looping okay and uh, the language is the set of all strings for which the machine accept now there are two different classes of languages represented by Turing machines they are called recursively enumerable and recursive and before defining it we need to look at the concept of halting a Turing machine M is set to halt or stop on an input string W if M either accepts W or rejects W. In other words, if M either gets into the state T or gets into the t, uh, state R, then the machine is set to halt. Recall that once it gets into either T or R, the machine needs to stay in that state forever. If that happens, then the machine is set to halt. Okay, and given an input string W, a Turing machine M can halt on W. Halt means either accepts or rejects. And there is another case if it is not halting, it is looping. You know what is looping, right? Now, a language is said to be recursively enumerable, also known as semi decidable if there exists a Turing machine accepting that language. So the class of languages accepted by the family of Turing machines is called recursively enumerable. Another name is semi-decidable. Okay? Now what is recursive? A language is said to be recursive also known as decidable if there exists a Turing machine M such that M accept that language that means it is recursively enumerable and also M halts on all input. Okay, so given a language L if there exists a Turing machine accepting the language you can call that the language is recursively enumerable. Okay. And when you can call a language as recursive, there exists a Turing machine that means it is also recursively enumerable. In addition to that, we need that Turing machine halting on all inputs. That is if the language is recursive, then given any input string that will be either accepted or rejected. The third, the, this condition is not permissible in a recursive language. Okay? So, all recursive languages are recursively enumerable, but not the other way. If there existed two remission, the language is recursively enumerable. And therefore, in both these cases, recursively enumerable. But if the two remission has on all input, then that language is known as recursive. So, it is a restricted class of languages in that sense. Then why the language is called recursively enumerable is because there exists a special Turing machine which can enumerate or list all the strings in the language of a Turing machine which is what is called an enumeration machine and that is why the name of the language family is recursively enumerable. Okay? So, a Turing machine which halts on all input is what is called a total Turing machine, TTM, total Turing machine, meaning given any input string, it will either reject or accept. It will never loop on any input. Such a Turing machine is called a total Turing machine. Okay. So, you can say that if there exists a total Turing machine, then it is a recursive language. And if you cannot find a total Turing machine, but only a Turing machine, it is 
only recursively enumerable not recursive that is a definition and uh, the class of recursively enumerable languages is represented by an equivalent grammar called unrestricted grammar unrestricted grammar unrestricted in the sense that in the lhs and in the rhs any string of variables and terminals with only one restriction the lhs cannot be epsilon because it's not meaningful to have a lhs as epsilon that is the only restriction otherwise unrestricted so unrestricted grammar is the class of grammar equivalent to turing machines now we have uh, discussed about all classes of languages in chomsky hierarchy we can just recall first we discussed about the class of regular languages and there we discussed about various representations dfa nfa michel neuro relation regular grammar and regular expression all are pairwise equivalent representations and an example language is set of all strings over av starting with a and ending with b and the next powerful class of language is deterministic contest free language which is a superset of this regular languages and the representations that we discussed there deterministic push down automata and deterministic contest free grammar the corresponding grammar and example language is a raise to n b raise to n and the next powerful class of language is contest free language which is non deterministic the representations we discussed are non deterministic pda and contest free grammar the corresponding grammar when you apply the construction that we discussed to get a grammar you will get gft and when you apply that construction on this P, uh, deterministic pda you will get this grammar and an example language is set of all even palindromes is an example and the next powerful class of language is context sensitive languages and the representations we discussed are context sensitive grammars and linear bounded automata example language is this a raised to n b raised to n c raised to n next powerful class of language is recursively enumerable and today we saw that the representations are turing machines and unrestricted grammar an example grammar language is hp that we shall see later the halting problem is represented by language which is a recursively enumerable language now there is a subset of recursively enumerable languages or a subclass which is called recursive what is recursive when you have a total turing machine then the language is called recursive all turing machines may not be total okay if you don't have a total turing machine only a turing machine then it is recursively enumerable and if you have a total turing machine the language is more manageable and which is recursive an example is uh, ww strings of the form ww this is chomsky hierarchy and with this we are coming to the last slide where i am giving you an exercise for you to design a total turing machine for this language and hence conclude that it is recursive total means it should halt on all input and whatever we designed as turing machine or linear bounded automata all those are total today we looked at the family of languages defined by the class of turing machines there are two classes of languages recursive and recursively enumerable what are recursively enumerable a language is called recursively enumerable if there exists a turing machine accepting that language and recursive is a strict subset of recursively enumerable languages 
and here we want to have a total Turing machine. What is a total Turing machine? A machine which holds on all input. But a general Turing machine may not halt on all input. It may either halt that is accepting or rejecting or it may loop. With this we are finishing this lecture. Thank you.